So what I wanted to do in this video is to paint an entire painting and most of it is just going to be time-lapse but I'm going to be pausing every now and again and explain some of the things that I'm doing. So I might talk a little bit about mountains and about the sky and all kinds of different things. So it's going to be a mixture of a time-lapse painting and a, a tutorial in how to paint from imagination. So that's the plan. So let's go. So you're going to hear me talk quite a lot about this, uh, about the, um, the good things about painting from imagination. And keep in mind that I know that there are a lot of drawbacks. So I'm just, uh, most of the things that I'm going to say are extolling this kind of this way to paint, but of course I realize that the, it comes with a lot of limitations and uh, just keep that in mind. But for instance, one of the wonderful things about it is that you can just follow the flow. So I think a lot of express, uh, more expressive arts um, have that, and this in a way is the mixture of the two. It's a realistic way of painting, but you can still go with the flow. There is no there's no reference point, there's nothing that you have to try to live up to, there's no picture to follow. And you can just follow the way the painting goes. And I really love that about this. thing once, the entire canvas that is, um, and now I, I will just take some time to look at it and see how it's going to go and progress further. There's quite a lot of paint on this too, so while I do want to continue to paint uh, wet on wet, which means that it's not dried yet when I'm going to continue, I am still going to let it dry a bit so that it doesn't become too thick because then everything just mixes together. So I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then uh, we're going to continue. I have no idea really what I'm going to do. So what I often like to do at this point if I have no idea is just to lean back and look at it for a while and things will start to come to me. Let's see. So this is the second day, and now it's much drier. So it's um, dried overnight, and it hasn't dried completely, which is good, because I want to use the colors that are there, but it's much drier, which means that, uh, well, you're going to see what that means, but uh, essentially, I can paint some things on top of it, I have more control, it's not all, I'm not going to become a mud mixture, a mix, <laughs> mixer. Um, now that it's uh, set quite a bit. So now we're just going to continue and I, I don't really have much more of an idea than I did yesterday. But I'm going to try out uh, a bit now in the beginning and see how the colors, um, how much they have dried. And I think uh, a lot of the beginning is just going to be getting a feel of the painting. So. When it's dry like this, uh, overnight, you can do different things to it than you could while it was still completely fresh. So let's just dive in, I think.
so at this point, I am starting to get afraid that I'm going to ruin it if I'm going to, if I'm going to paint any more. So I think I'm just going to let this layer dry. That doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to paint. Um, but I'm just going to let this background layer dry once so that I have it. And then I can paint on top of it and I can accentuate the highlights and so on. But uh, now I think it's time to create the, the landscape. And for this, as ever with this, uh, so far at least with this landscape, I am not sure where it's going to go. But um, so how I'll approach this is, well, as all of us, we have a lot of different uh, memories. This is the memory part of the painting from imagination and memory. And just reaching back and thinking what kind of landscapes do I have in my head? This is either from things I've painted before or things I have experienced or paint landscapes that I've just seen. Um, and often it will start with a theme, so in a sense of um, either it's going to be a marsh or highlands or something like that, just to have an idea what to put in. And if I have almost no idea, like right now, Colors can be a good, good starting point. Um, I think it's going to be nice with some trees in front. I, I just don't know. Since this is such a, well, for me at least, this is a very large landscape. Uh, it's nice to have a, a big landscape uh, in front of me with lots and lots of details. So I think mountains. I think we'll just start with some mountains and see where to go, where it goes from there. I like this orange, and I like would like that to be a part of the the sky actually. So the mountains will just be over there, over it, and yeah, let's just start with that. And especially if I make if I'm just gonna paint the mountains and so on and everything that's here then I can still paint on the sky later without being afraid of painting on top of something. And with the mountains, I like to just start with uh, a blue. So the further something uh, is away in the landscape, and you can observe that just looking at um, a large landscape ahead in front of you, it's going to be uh, more blue the further away it is. And so if you want to create depth, the things that are really far away, painted blue, that's a good rule.
Okay, and now that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some highlights into the painting. And for the highlights, the most important thing is just to yeah, remember where's the light source, where's the light coming from. So there's the sun here, so we know, okay, here's the light source. And if there's gonna be light here, it's gonna be on this side, and here it's gonna be on this side. And just follow that, and then adding shading to the painting can really just become something quite automatic. You just have to keep in mind where the light's coming from. And with this, with a lot of clouds, you don't have to do it at all everywhere, just some places where it looks nice. And just begin, really. And see, okay, maybe a little bit here. And just follow the logic of it. And when you start shading, that's when a lot of the shapes come out. And that's when you need to have some idea of how it, the mountain would look. But a lot of that is already done in the shape and with my brushwork. And just this idea of how, how it would be shaped from the rain, from, from the earth, from... Yes, a lot of this is it's difficult to explain because a lot of it is an intuitive process. Um, third day now it's uh, dried off quite uh, quite a bit and I think up here it's almost completely dry though it's uh, it's a little bit uh, moist still so there's still a bit of mixing that I can do but uh, otherwise it's uh, pretty dry and um, there's quite a bit of stuff that I'm that I will be able to do here and yeah let's uh, just continue this point before I paint it in too many trees and so on. I'm going to do a few layers of this, so this will just be the first one with fog and um, mist. It's um, I like to have it in layers so that you get a three-dimensionality to it and trees and stuff will probably be in the fog at some points but I'll first paint it and then I'll let it dry and then I'll paint something into it and then the next layer will come on top of it. So now it's just going around the painting and seeing where it might be nice to have it drift in. 
I think I'm just gonna start far enough in the background and see where it fits. Quite a bit of it might disappear again at some later stage, we'll see. painting fog I like to imagine how it there are two different things to remember two of the more important things at least is the way it behaves itself and the billowing out and the rising of it and then the way the wind will then affect it afterwards so it will billow and then if there's a breeze you know it'll be taken with that will take it with it so having these things in mind really helps when when painting, it's a bit of like painting clouds, just that it's uh, going to be creeping on the bottom, so it's a different, that's a different aspect to it. And exactly like with clouds, it's very helpful to watch time-lapse videos of uh, drifting fog really helps you get a feel of how it moves and behaves. the scariest part. I want a plant this time, not a tree. It's so much closer to us to grow here. And of course none of this is going to be reversible. And that's always quite scary, but I really like the effect of it. And let's just try it out, see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. 